Hey guys, it's Hershey with the Sport ACB Podcast here. Back for day two. Oops. <laughs> day two of the bowl games. So yesterday we had a, quite a few bowl games and boy were they good. I mean, did we not promise that? Uh, I'm completely stoked about the games. But first let's get started with the Boca Raton Bowl where Western Kentucky University took on... Uh, who did they take on again? The Appalachian State Mountaineers. Sorry. Uh, and it was a historic game for the um, no for WKU. Bailey Zappi co capped his record-setting season by breaking two records during the game. The single single season passing record set by Texas Tech's BJ Simons in 2013. Um, no Zappi had 5,000 ended the season with 5,967 yards. Then he also broke the single season TV record set by Joe Burrow in 2019 uh, with 62 touchdowns. Now, it wasn't all the ba- Bailey Sappy Bowl, but he is making his case for uh, the NFL at this point in time. Jared Stern had a heck of a game. He caught 13 targets for 184 yards with 13 touchdowns, finishing his whole season with 115 catches uh, for uh, 1,120 yards. Pretty good. Marshall Tinsley also added two more catches, while Noah Whit- Whittington had seven carries for 150 yards with 86 of those yards coming in a single run. So they were coasting the whole game. I mean, where was this when they faced UTSA? Um, now, the great, uh, what a great way to end this season for uh, for WKU, especially considering that um, after the destructive uh, tornadoes that passed through a lot of the cities in Kentucky and is blamed for 78 deaths. So what a way to really lift up the spirits of the state and say, hey, you know what? We're coming, we're, we're proud of ourselves, and we're going to, you know, here's something to, to hang your hope on. On the other side, though, Appalachian State did struggle most of the game. Chase Bryce passed for 317 yards, but had to leave in the fourth quarter uh, due to a right leg injury. The Mountaineers turned the ball over four times, which caused them to be outscored 137 to once. I mean, sorry, 637 to 609. Uh, this was also the first loss for the Mountaineers in seven bowl games. That's crazy to think. They've gone seven straight bowl games without losing till now. Now, one other thing that happened in this bowl game, the 97 points scored between the Hilltoppers and the Mountaineers was the Boca Raton Bowl record. And the 59 points that the Hilltoppers themselves scored alone was also a record setting for the bowl game. So. Great way to, for uh, Zappi to go into the NFL, but hey, let's move on to the next one. Bowl number two, the PUBG Mobile New Mexico Bowl, where the Fresno State Bulldogs took, took the UTEP Miners, took on the UTEP Miners. Now, interesting game here, but Jordan Means and the Fresno State Bulldogs put up one heck of a fight versus the Miner, but they took the win 31-24 for its first bowl win in three years. Mims ran for 165 yards and two touchdowns while also catching five passes for 71 yards while adding a passing touchdown. Jay Carnier was 26 for 41 for 286 and of course a touchdown. No, now this is important to know because before going into the bowl game, he was actually in question to play in the bowl game given that he was he had entered the transfer portal because their head coach had left to take the Washington job. Now, Fresno State is under a lot of pressure at this moment because their old head coach, Jeff Tedford, is coming back from a two-year hiatus due to a health absence. Um, so it's going to be interesting, but winning the bowl game truly helps them move on into the future. As far as the Miners goes, the Miners quarterback, Halvin Bronswell, had 50, 51 yard, had a 51-yard touchdown to Trent Thompson to help them keep the game close. But at the end, the Utah Miners could not give anything, okay? They also used quarterback Gavin Henderson, who threw for 252 yards and a touchdown. Now, with Harrison, that was probably the best thing that happened to them. But outside of that, there's really nothing else good going on here. But on the plus side for the Miners, with Henderson, running back Ronald Awat, and Jake and wide receiver Jacob Cohen all coming back next year, they have a good, good... Um, middle, uh, I'm sorry, a good foundation set for next year. Uh, let's just hope that they keep it, keep it going. 
because it was a very close game. For the third game of yesterday's career, or lineup, the Independence Bowl, where UAB upset BYU and threw it to all, threw off everybody. So, again, in the first upset of the 2021 Bowl season, UAB beats BYU 31-28 in the Independence Bowl. UAB's Dylan Hopkins set an Independence Bowl record by completing his first 13 passes. He also ended the game with uh, nine, he also ended the game going 19 for 23 for 183 yards, three touchdowns, and only one interception. Now, Dwayne McBride was also important in the game, who had 28 carries for 183 yards and one touchdown. Of course, Garrett Price had two of the three touchdowns from Hopkins, while Trey Shropshire had had the third one. So they were gelling right there. On the other side, though, BYU had who came into the game with six Power 5 wins, it all came crashing down for them versus UAB in the Independence Bowl. And although they had one last charge, one last chance with three minutes left in the game, um, no, Samson, uh, I'm sorry, Samson Nakuas had a uh, last minute fumble that really, really cost them and ended their chances to come back in the game. BYU's quarterback, Baylor Roman, went 15 for 23 for 195 yards, but the real MVP and what truly kept them in the game was running back Tyler Aguirre, who, whose performance earned him the Independence Bowl MVP. Aguirre had 27 carries for 192 yards and three touchdowns. Very close game, very good game, really liked this upset. Not for the, uh, for the betting, but hey, moving on. Now to the Learning Tree Bowl, where Liberty took on Eastern Michigan. So Liberty sent quarterback Malik Willis a potential number one pick, a potential first round pick in the NFL draft with the win in his final game of his career for Liberty. Liberty is now 3-0 in bowl games, and what makes it more crazy is that they only had a three-point lead at the beginning of the second quarter. So, meaning they, they were getting dominated, basically. Lucky for Liberty fans, myself and Willis, uh, Willis and the offense turned it, turned it after burners and scored three unders and touchdowns before the end of the half. Mike Willis ended the game with 300, I mean, sorry, with thir going 13 for 24 for 231 yards, two touchdowns, while also adding a 58 yard, uh, adding 58 rushing yards and two more touchdowns. Willis also had no interceptions, so he had about as much of a perfect game as you can, which is very important because he is being considered as a first round talent, so games like this will go a long way. As far as Eastern Michigan goes, uh, they played one heck of a game. It was pretty close, but it was really too not enough at the end. The game, no, the uh, Eastern Michigan had 23 first downs which is usually unheard of in college football, but it was really impressive to have. But all that is for nothing, because they went one for four on fourth down when they really needed to convert, and they had just nine penalties, but for a whopping 82 yards. I mean, come on, that's like almost going halfway down the field already. No, now, Eastern Michigan is now 0-4 in the bowl games under Chris Carrington and is still looking for its first bowl win since 1987. So, nothing really good for Eastern Michigan, but they can build on the some of the few positive things like the 23 first downs. Moving on to the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, Utah State wins the Mountain West the first time since their inaugural season in 2013 and then takes home a win in the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl where Jimmy Kimmel actually started the performance by playing the clarinet. Interesting, gotta watch it. Go to YouTube, watch it, worth it. But uh, it was not an easy win for the Utah Aggies. Quarterback Lockham Bonner did leave, the, leave, leave in the first quarter with a leg injury and was replaced by freshman Cooper Legas, uh, who had never thrown a pass until today. He did uh, practice as number two, as the number two QB going into the bowl game, but really had not thrown in the active game. But he did end, uh, end the game with 11, going 11 for 20 for 171 yards, two touchdowns and only one interception. It's pretty good for his first game. Devin Tompkins became Legas' safety net 
with six receptions for 115 yards and one touchdown. That was, and that touchdown was for 62 yards. Then the run game was also quite helpful for the freshman, with Calvin Tyler Jr. going 26, going for 26 carries, 120 yards, and one touchdown. With the bowl game, with this bowl game, it marks an 11-win season for the Utah Aggies, which is the first time they've had that since 2018. So, very good win for this season for them. On the other side, like we've been saying, Oregon State was not able to move the ball at all and lacked the protection we saw during the season by allowing four sacks and three turnovers, um, no, to the Utah State Aggies. They also could not get the wrong game going, which uh, was very unfamiliar to them because they did have the Pac-12 leading rusher in B.J. Baylor. He only had 70 carries for 78 yards. And although they lost uh, in a very scary fashion, Oregon State can still call this a win season since it was the first uh, bowl game trip since 2018, 2013. So they're moving forward, a little bumpy, but they're getting there, they're getting there. Now to one of my personal favorite games that I watched was the RL Couriers New Orleans Bowl where they're raging car- Cajuns, number 23, sent Levi Lewis out with one heck of a win in the bowl game plus bowl game MVP honors. This kid, who is another guy that is being considered as a first round quarterback talent, went for 19 for 31 for 270 yards and one touchdown and a school record 13 wins. I mean, amazing, right? It can. It was not easy win by any means. They had. They did have to fight twice uh, to come back and take the lead. But a 20 unanswered points in the fourth quarter was able to help them solidify the win versus Marshall. Now Mo- Montreal Johnson, who had 54 rushing, jar- y- rushing yards, combined with Lewis for 222 rushing yards total. Now the defense was very instrumental. Instrumental in the fourth quarter because they were able to shut down um, the herd at every pivotal point and only allowing them to have 15 total combined yards in the fourth quarter to, of course, again, keep the win on the Reggie Cajun side. As far as the herd goes, they struggled throughout the game, but uh, they were able to have some hope behind running back Rasheen Ali, who had 20 carries for 160 yards and three touchdowns. Now, Marshall quarterback Grant Wells also had a pretty good game. Uh, He went 25 for 36 for 219, one touchdown, but again, like we said earlier, he had two interceptions. The Herd had a five point lead going into the fourth quarter, but it just could not overcome the Reggie Cajun defense, who was putting pressure on the quarterback and sacking him twice and only allowing them to have 15 total rushing yards with no points in the fourth quarter. So, very, very good game for the Raging Cajuns. Now, this has a sitting implication going into next year. They are number 23, this was a very dominant win. Obviously, we have to wait till after the national championship to see where they will will end up. But, uh, I think they're gonna move up here. Probably probably 15, which is the highest they've ever been. Uh, Just depends on what else happens throughout the bowl game season with that being said guys that was day two keep listening keep an eye out if you guys have any comments please let us know follow us on all social media we're excited to see you guys and as always keep watching football because bowl season is here and i think trash panda might be doing tomorrow's i don't know he hasn't been around in a few days i'm a little worried